This episode of Hack Tip is brought to you by HipChat. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morse, and today we are checking out Wireshark and HTTP. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and this is another common upper layer protocol that you run into from time to time in Wireshark. Specifically, HTTP can be found in layer 7 of the OSI model. Now, HTTP allows your web browser to connect to a server and allow you to view a website. So when you go to hack5.org or youtube.com, com or anything in between, you are using HTTP. Now, if we take a look at this in Wireshark, you're going to view one of the packets. It's going to vary a lot depending on where on the internet you are heading. So you will see a whole lot of different HTTP packets as you scroll down in your packet capture. So let's take a look at a few of these different packet headers so you can see a few different similarities or a few same similarities. So first off, the first one you will get anytime you go to a website will be this get HTTP slash one dash one. It'll generally look like that once communication is set up between you and the website server. The packet comes in over TCP port 80 and you can see that right down here. So we see TCP port and then whatever port it is, destination port 80. Now, of course, the source port will change depending on your network. Now we're going to try the get the web directory of the server by using HTTP version 1-1. And that's why up at the top under info, you'll see get HTTP version 1.1. Now a little lower down in the center column is a thing called user agent info. And this is going to tell the server what kind of information information my computer can accept. So if I scroll down here and check that out, here we go, user agent, encoding, and accepted language. So language will depend on what you set up your computer for. I'm English US. Encoding can be gzip or whatever you end up using. And then up here, user agent is going to tell them, tell the server what kind of information I can accept based on my web browsing. Now, after this packet, the server will send a TCP acknowledgement to you and HTTP will thereon out be used for application layer commands. Once TCP is done, HTTP will give you another packet that says response code 200. And this means that you've had a successful request method. So if I'm able to access hack5.org, for example, and I know I want to go to hack5.org because the host under my first get request says hak5.org, then I can move down and look at, this is a good example. It might not match this one, but whatever, it's for a demo. So I can scroll down here and it says 200 okay. And if I look under HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, that'll also say 200 OK. And let's scroll down just a bit. Status code 200, response phrase OK. So that means everything went well and I'm able to connect to the server. Now that's really quick and simple. After the break, I'll show you what it looks like when you aren't downloading something from a server or a website, but instead you are uploading something like comments on Twitter. We'll be right back. How is your team communicating? Are they using a variety of email, IM, texting, cloud storage, and document sharing apps? HipChat puts everything in one place and is designed specifically for business. So the solution, HipChat. They are IM, video chat, document sharing, screen sharing, system updates, and code sharing integrated all into one simple platform. Email's too slow, meetings get sidetracked, and regular IM doesn't work well for groups. HipChat keeps your team in sync and it works from any device no matter where you are. And the best part? HipChat integrates with the top developer tools like GitHub, Jira, Zendesk, and more. There's 57 services total that HipChat plays nice with. Now, HipChat brings your entire project and team communications together, and they're easy to set up, fun to use, and it makes your team wildly productive. Now, I use HipChat here for our offices, specifically to share code snippets over with Darren for all my Arduino builds over on Hack5. Super simple and makes our pro progress for the show pretty quick. Now, get your team on the same page in seconds. I want you to try HipChat free with no credit card required. Visit hipchat.com slash hacktip, sign up, click on start chatting, and then invite a few team members. And try it for free for 30 days. Remember, that's hipchat.com slash hacktip, and for the first 100 signups, HipChat is going to extend their 30-day free trial to 90 days. HipChat, your team, your project, in sync instantly. 
We are back with more HTTP. Now, when we need to upload data to a web server, such as when you are posting a tweet, or you're typing to somebody in IRC, or you're commenting on somebody's wall on Facebook, or whatever, you are creating a post packet via HTTP in Wireshark. These need a three-way handshake, so a request, a response, and an OK, or a, you know, whatever, from the client to the server, and then back again. This packet will be labeled as a post packet, and the line-based text data will show you the content contents of the data posted if it's available. Now, I'll show you some of these packets because I was sitting in IRC and I was able to get a whole bunch of them coming up whenever I was posting stuff. So if we look at our packet capture down here in Wireshark, we have HTTP, a whole bunch of packets, and then the biggest standout that you're going to see for these post packets is post in nice big letters so it's very easy to see. Now if we scroll down to the center column, I'll go ahead and make it a little bit bigger for you guys and scroll under HTTP, the hypertext transfer protocol area, and we just maximize all this different tree stuff. Scroll down a bit more, we can see that, there we go, our host is the IRC web chat that I was in, and if I scroll down all the way to the bottom, that is where you would find your line-based text data if it's available for you. Now, after all that information is found, what will happen once the connection has been made is you will start seeing all your different posts and all your different get requests from whatever you're working on, be it IRC or your comments on Twitter. Now that is about it for HTTP. It's pretty easy to understand how this level of protocol works and that rounds out all the different protocols for our upper layer explanation. Now I'm gonna get into some real world explanations in just a little bit in the next coming weeks. So let me know what you think and if you wanna see anything in particular. Send me a comment below or email us tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show Hack5 for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your technolust.